morning, please join me as, um, in our affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives us life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in Him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. so glad that you are here on this first Sunday after Easter. My name is Elizabeth Booker and I am on staff here at St. Peter's. Today we are celebrating our graduating seniors from high school so we are so excited to have them here uh, today as we celebrate that and um, as you are sitting there please notice that on the pews there are the places to sign in. We'd love to hear from you and get your information. If you don't have any updated information please fill it out or any prayer requests. Uh, so those should be at the end of your pews. But as um, you get signed in and stuff, please turn your attention to our screens for our opportunities to connect. The life of the church goes beyond Sunday mornings, and there are so many opportunities for you to gather, grow, go, and give with us this week. See wow. We are so excited for Church Without Walls next Sunday, April 14th. Join us for a morning of serving, followed by a one church ice cream celebration at the Kingsland campus. Go to stpkd.org slash events to sign up for specific service projects. We hope to see you next Sunday for See wow. Spring Brunch. Join St. Peter's Women's Ministry for a spring garden tea and brunch on April 20th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. You are encouraged to dress in your best garden party attire. There will be musical entertainment and an encouraging speaker. Register at stpkd.org slash events. Make sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our weekly newsletter to keep up to date with what's going on at St. Peter's each week. Let me say about next Sunday, it is uh, Church Without Walls. So we'll have a service at nine o'clock here in the sanctuary. It'll be 20 to 30 minutes at the most. And then we'll either go somewhere within the building, there are several pro projects here that you can participate in, or you can then go uh, to one of the projects that we have uh, out with, you know, outside the walls of the church uh, to try to reach out into our community. It's a great opportunity for us to serve God by serving other people. I look forward to seeing you at nine o'clock in the morning next Sunday, and then out we go to share the good news. And now, speaking of good news, here's Chad. That's the first time anyone's ever said that. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Chad uh, McEllen. I'm the pastor of Student Ministries, uh, working with students 6th through 12th grade. And today is a very special day as we are celebrating Senior Sunday. It's a time to celebrate uh, the class of 2024 um, and this achievement and, and as uh, these students um, are graduating high school and it's just uh, what we celebrate today is we celebrate all that they have accomplished and all that they'll continue to do even after whatever those next steps may be and we just always want to remind all the seniors here that your church family here at St. Peter's loves you very much and is going to continue loving you no matter what and then we're also uh, going to continue uh, being prayer for prayer and supporting you whatever your next steps will be. Uh, so something we always do, uh, this is a long-standing tradition at St. Peter's, and y'all probably walked in and you're like, oh, this looks a little different over here. Uh, this is our bell cross, our senior bell cross, and uh, what it represents is throughout the years, uh, all these uh, bells represent uh, graduating seniors. 
And uh, what the bells represent is that each bell represents an individual senior. And you know, uh, you know, as individuals and as Christians, we're called to go and make noise into the world, to go share the love of Christ in the world. You know, as an individual, it's okay. Maybe there's the, with the help of the mic. In, as an individual, you can make a decent amount of noise, but we need to be reminded we're a part of the church. And we could be much louder together in the world, sharing the love of God out in the world. So as seniors who come up here, they'll pin a bell onto the cross as this reminder that they are not alone, but they are a part of a greater community uh, that surrounds them with uh, God's love. Uh, so they'll come up here and pin the cross. And we also have special Bibles that we'll give them each. Uh, these Bibles, uh, um, uh, not only are they just pretty nice Bibles, but they are also, they have margins, uh, they have places to journal in the margins so that in you're continuing studying scripture and you're continuing on, you can write notes and questions and thoughts or just doodle and color, whatever it may be helpful to you as you uh, take these with you and wherever your next steps are. So we'll call up the seniors by their name and by their high school. And as they come up here, they'll go through there and then we'll do a, a prayer with uh, Pat. We'll give us a closing prayer with them. All right, first thing we're going to recognize is Abby Taylor from Katy High School. And we can clap. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we have Nathan Benford from Taylor High School. Olivia Cooper from Taylor High School. And Liam Trainer from Seven Lakes High School. And Okazika Anianwu from Tompkins High School. These are graduating seniors having this much trouble putting a bell on <laughs> confidence in the future of our world. Oh, no, a I'm a senior citizen. You need any help? Okay. <laughs> Here you go. And here's your Bible. And wait, here's a picture. And let's hear it again for our seniors. All right, since I'm going to talk about y'all being together, I'm going to push you over here with them. Uh, I, put, I put him over there, and then I realized, oh, I put him by himself. So now they're all together, and I want to congratulate you. Um, just a heads up, my sermon today is really to you. So even though you go back out there, be careful. I'm going to be looking at you and, <laughs> and preaching to you. Okay? Now, as Chad said, I'll be saying a prayer. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Loving God, we are grateful for this opportunity to celebrate these seniors as um, they come to the end of one chapter of their life and turn the page to a new chapter. And whatever those days hold for them, we'd ask that they might understand that you're with them always, that you are there to give them the strength and the support and the and, uh, encouragement that they need, uh, that your spirit fills them and, and provides them all that they need. Help them to count on you and to count on this community of faith and others who might encourage them and walk alongside them. Bless them in their future and help them to know that you love them so much. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Congratulations again.
time of prayer, please find a posture that is comfortable and bow your heads with me. Generous and giving God, this morning we again gather in this place with lifted voices, open hearts, seeking you. Lord, we seek you this and all mornings to hear your voice and know your spirit deeper and richer. Lord, we thank you that each morning we came to you and pause and lift before you all that weighs on our hearts and minds, all our praises and concerns, all our desires and worry. We pause now and lay them at your feet. Almighty God, you are gracious Father, clothed in majesty. You are mighty, yet you save us with mercy. Almighty God, you are an exquisite creator with hands that carve out beauty. You are the author of life, yet you give us such freedom. Almighty God, you know each of us intimately. Your heart is full of love, yet you watch over us in our weakness and guide us daily. Prince of Peace, we draw near to you and drink in the promise of eternity. Lord of Peace, we walk with you and seek your guidance as we learn to be more loving. Lord of Peace, in your sanctuary we are safe, safe to let down our guard and dwell in your truth. Risen Lord, you came for the needy, the poor, the oppressed, the forsaken, and those that society has forgotten. Risen Lord, your life renews our hearts from within. Thank you that we can carry your promise of forgiveness. Risen Lord, we ask for your spirit to work through us as we minister to the world and share your love with all. Almighty God, Prince of Peace, Risen Lord, we dedicate our lives to you. Hear our prayer, Lord, as we ask in your son's name. Amen. Well, I did have to tease the graduating seniors a little bit about how hard it is to put a bell on. Um, I did that knowing that putting a bell on with a pen uh, in front of hundreds of people is a little nerve-wracking, you know, fear of uh, sticking yourself and all that. So uh, I was just teasing. We have confidence in your ability to do that when nobody's watching. <laughs> As I mentioned, I'm going to be kind of focusing my sermon toward the graduating seniors, but uh, the rest of y'all can just listen in, but just now I'm kind of talking to them. Uh, and actually, it's a little bit of truth for all of us to consider. Um, as I was uh, thinking about our graduating seniors, I remembered back to that day for me, and I, that means I have a pretty good memory, uh, indeed. Um, and I was thinking about how I'd grown up at home, I stayed uh, at home with my parents, and then when I graduated from high school, I actually went to uh, St. Jacinto Junior College, uh, the main campus, they weren't scattered all over at the time, uh, and I went for one year there, and then in that period of time, I had felt called to ministry, and so so um, uh, last Sunday, I don't know if you saw my Facebook post, but uh, one of my mentors, the district superintendent of the church where I grew up uh, here in the city of Houston, uh, was here. He's 98 and a half years old. Um, by the way, when you get to be over 90, you start adding the half back, okay? Before you're 10 and after you're 90, you start doing that. Uh, and so I got a picture of him, and it was really cool to be able to be there. He helped me go out into the ministry. I went up to East Texas, as you know. I moved about five hours drive away from my parents, where that's where I'd lived until that day. Uh, I remember driving away uh, from the house. Uh, I'd gone over to Jenna's house. Uh, her parents took a picture of me driving away in my little two-door Le Mans. Had a little U-Haul, uh, the smallest U-Haul trailer you could pull behind it. Everything I owned was in there with, with space to go. Uh, and then a year later, during that year, Jenna and I got married uh, and uh, we lived there. And then we moved to another appointment, another church, uh, and we had to rent this big truck. Uh, what happened other than getting married? I, you know, anyway, uh, before I get in more trouble, let's just say uh, I remember that day leaving and thinking how much... Um, angst that I had about uh, what I was doing because I was leaving the house for the first time. 
I was going up to be five hours away. I was also leaving uh, behind my you know, girlfriend at the time, fiance. We did get married seven weeks later, so I was about to get married. Uh, and I was going up to serve four churches uh, and, and to preach to these folks and to take on the role as pastor. Uh, I remember you know, back then we called our youth, our student ministry, uh, MYF, uh, United, well, even UMYF, United Methodist Youth Fellowship. I remember thinking, you know, most of the time I'm preaching to these people, uh, MYF devotionals, but they, they were so encouraging, you know, about it all. Uh, and so when I was uh, going off for my parents, I was leaving my uh, future wife behind. I was uh, going to be in a new college. I was going to have a new job in ministry for churches being in that. What I'm kind of saying is there was a little anxiety. Uh, in, in my life at that moment. Uh, fear, uh, anxiety, what's going to happen? How am I going to live into this calling? Uh, what am I going to do? How's it going to work out? Uh, and, I, and I was uh, really full of fear and trembling at that time. When I got up there, uh, my first Sunday in preaching, my uh, future mother-in-law and father-in-law brought Jenna and they attended all four churches with me and kind of gave me strength and support and heard the same sermonette, uh, you know, four times. And uh, so uh, that was really helpful, but they had the nerve to leave right after church and drive back to Houston and leave me alone again. Uh, and so I felt lonely and I felt all alone. Uh, I remember though, uh, after they left, I got a phone call and uh, this will mean something to some of you. Uh, it was a party line and my line was one long, one short. Some of you know what I mean, right? Uh, if you know, you know. Ring, ring. That's when I answered. Any other ring I didn't answer because there were eight people on the same party line. Okay. And it was, uh, it was this family of two women who had never married and their brother who had never married and the three of them lived in the house in which they were born. Born in the house and still lived in the house and they were in their 80s and 90s. And they said, why don't you come over for some cookies and cream? And I was like, I don't know what I'm getting into. <laughs> so I went and they had warm homemade chocolate chip cookies and fresh made homemade ice cream. <laughs> this is how I got my physical, you know, stature. Uh, and, and so they visited with me and, uh, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll confess this. They said something like, well, I'm glad that you're, you know, you're future wife and in-laws could be here and uh, I'm glad they got to visit with you. And I said, yeah. But, you know, now that they're gone, I'm kind of lonely, and I started crying. <laughs> and they just, you know, loved on me. And, uh, and then the church just kept being encouraging and supportive. Well, what I'm kind of indicating here is I'm well aware, seniors, that these steps we take, these times of transition, uh, they can be scary even. They can uh, build angst. And, uh, and so really what I want to talk to you about today is your need to find people that will encourage you and support you and surround you uh, in these days ahead as you go through this time. And I really want you to know that this church is committed to pray for you wherever it is you're going. Uh, your family's going to be with you and pray with you. Uh, you have people right here. And then I say, go find people in the place that you go to live and find them so they can surround you and encourage you uh, and support you. Um, I found uh, in that time a, a lot of help because that, that all those transitions were so significant. I, I imagine if I just said, hey, start telling me your stories, this room would be filled with stories of people that could say, well, when I finished high school or when I finished college or when I went and got my first job or whatever those transitions might be, you know, getting married. Uh, um, I, I'm 67 now, so not right now, but I am thinking about that next transition that's coming. You know, it's called retirement. I hear people talk about that sometimes. Uh, these transitions are major life transitions, and it brings us some... Um, you know, lack of confidence in our, how are we going to navigate those days? 
Now, maybe none of our graduating sen seniors have that because you're probably the one and only in the world that never had that happen. Every one of us have that angst. Every one of us thinks about that in our times of transition. Now I want to turn to the scripture and I want to talk about some transitions in the Bible. Uh, after the Easter message, which we proclaim, proclaimed last Sunday, um, there was some more transitions that needed to happen. And today I want to talk about some of the transitions that those disciples had to experience. And I want to hone in on one particular of the disciples, and that's Thomas. But for now, let me turn to John chapter 20. I'll be reading verses 19 through 29 out of the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the marks of the nail in his hands and put my finger in the, marks, in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, Thanks be to God. There's so many things in this story that I really love and appreciate. First of all, they were together, except for Thomas, and they were together for fear of what might happen to them by the Jews. In other words, they saw that a Jesus was put to death, and now they feared that would be happening to them, possibly. And so they gathered together in fear of the Jews in one place. And then Jesus appeared to them, and he said, peace be with you. Now, notice that happened in both of the experiences. In fact, he repeated it uh, because in this first one, because they were probably so stunned that he was there in their presence. They had seen him die. Uh, Peter had seen the empty tomb. It pointed out last week that he believed, but obviously this was the first time he got to visually see Jesus. And so they were probably very stunned. And he said, I know right now you're full of angst. Um, you're, you're scared. Uh, you're full of fear. So let me just start with peace be with you. God's perfect peace. Shalom. God's peace be with you. Feel that presence uh, and then relax. And then he showed them his hands and his side. And then they believed. You see the storyline here? He calmed them in their angst. He showed them the proof, and then they believed, right? Thomas wasn't there, but they got to see all those things. Now, where was Thomas? That's a question. Some of the scholars have uh, kind of thought through this and speculated where Thomas may have been while they were gathered together. Thomas may have been one who had gone out to see what he could learn from the people, the Jews and others in the community, what was being said, and did they really need to be afraid of being persecuted and or put to death? Maybe he was kind of the scout that went out, right? Perhaps. Um, and uh, if so, uh, you know, it doesn't make it look like the name Doubting Thomas is the best title we ought to give to this guy uh, because he was the only one of that group willing to leave the hiding place to go out in the midst of where there was trouble. 
And, and not only that story, but if we look back in, in John chapter 8, when Jesus is making his way with, I'm sorry, I think I said 8. Did I say 8? Ignore that. It's John chapter 11. 11. I know you would have corrected me if I hadn't stopped. So John chapter 11, when Jesus has his disciples with him and he's going to make his way to Lazarus who is at the moment sick, and he said, I'm going to go visit my friend Lazarus. He is sick. And so uh, the disciples say, wait a minute, Jesus, uh, the people in Jerusalem are are mad at you. I mean, the the Jewish people, the Jewish leaders are mad. The, uh, The Romans are mad. I mean, if you go, you're risking your life. You could die if you go there. And he said, I'm going. I'm going to see my friend Lazarus. And then it was Thomas who said, well, then let's all go with him that we might die with him. Now, that's a pretty strong statement of faith from a person that later gets labeled doubting Thomas, isn't it? I think the fact that he was gone while everybody else was locked away after the resurrection, the fact he was willing to go along with Jesus knowing they would be facing trouble, maybe even death, when perhaps we should be calling him uh, uh, you know, uh, courageous. Uh, or fearless uh, Thomas instead of doubting Thomas. But here he is because he said, look, I'm going to have to see for myself. You know, they said, we saw him. Uh, they, I, you know, I always want to say, did they say, yeah, we were kind of like this. We didn't believe so much that he was really raised till he showed us his hands and his side. Uh, till we saw him ourselves." Or if they just said, hey, we saw him. Uh, and then Thomas responded, well, sure you did. Uh, I I saw him die. Uh, This stuff doesn't happen. I'll believe it when I see it. When I see his hand, when I see his side, then I'll believe. Well, uh, a week later, one long week later, they were all gathered together again. And this time Thomas was with them and Jesus appeared again. It says the doors were locked in each of these experiences. And then Jesus appeared. So you would know that each time they would be full of fear. So again, when he... uh, came through the wall, came through the door, appeared in their midst, however it was, and he first again said, peace be with you. And he calmed their fears and their anxiety. And then he turned his attention this time to Thomas. He said, here, do you want to touch my hand? Do you want to touch my side? And, and we see immediately Thomas did not need to do that. As soon as he saw him, he said to him, my Lord and my God, he was believing. And Jesus said, Have you believed because you have seen? Now, Jesus knew what was about to happen. Soon he would ascend into heaven and his physical appearances on earth would cease. And so this line is for you and me and all that came after them. Once he he rose up into heaven again and physically wasn't amongst the people of the world, he said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. We believe. We have faith. Thomas was a person of faith. And in that experience, in that transition, in that calling, these disciples were about to go out um, and and fulfill that great commission that Jesus would be giving them to go baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he said, remember, I am with you always to help them know that what they were doing, uh, God was going to be with them, that Christ would be with them, the Holy Spirit would fill them and help them along the way. Jesus had said, I need you to go and share the love of God, the gospel with the world to help them know that they could be forgiven uh, and made right in relationship with God. You talk about a major transition from being in the midst of Jesus by watching him heal and preach and, and all that they were able to do kind of within his loving arms wrapped around them uh, and they were there with him. But now he was going and Jesus was saying, it's your turn. You now go do this. They were graduating, my friends, and they had a future that they were not really sure how it would end. Um, And the Holy Spirit was going to need to be there to give them help and hope and encouragement. When I learn, when I see the fact that Thomas was gone the first time Jesus came uh, and met with them, it made me think about how sometimes it is when we as followers of Jesus encounter difficulties in our life, maybe like at the time Thomas was grieving the death of Jesus, and what did he do? Perhaps he isolated himself away from the community of faith. 
I see that happen to this day. People lose somebody and they're mourning and they want to be by themselves. And I understand the need to try to work through things on your own, but I also know the power uh, that is available to us in the community of faith. And what that story partly told me was Thomas needed to be with the others so together they could pray for each other and they could encourage one another, that they could support one another. Uh, that's what the community of faith is all about. And so when I'm thinking of this, I want to say to the graduating seniors, wherever you go, uh, we had uh, one graduating senior at the nine o'clock and I said, by the way, I didn't ask you where you were going. And, and, and he said, I'm, I'm going to Texas A&M. And I was like, oh, that's like an hour away. Uh, believe me, if you need your mama, she's going to be there in an hour. And, you know, uh, some of you may go further away than that, but wherever you go, what I hope you'll do is know we're here praying for you and encouraging you and like uh, your parents might be ready to be there in a, in a heartbeat, we're ready to be supportive and encouraging for you. But I'd also say to you, find people where you go. Get surrounded with people of faith that can encourage you and inspire you and help you. And when you're struggling, uh, when you're doubting, uh, when you're needing somebody to talk to, you have that resource around you. When I went off and, and did all that uh, back in 1976 and moved up there, uh, I started to Kilgore College was the new college I was going to. Uh, and I went to the Wesley Foundation, was, was the United Methodist uh, student ministry there on the campus campus. And at that student ministry, I met uh, a person uh, that became my friend immediately. And y'all have met him several times for I bring him here on Veterans Day every other year or so. His name is Mike Schutz, uh, and uh, he can still wear his uniform. Uh, and he's older than me, so, I, you know. Anyway, uh, but uh, in fact, he's coming this Veterans Day. I already got him on the calendar. He'll be here again. But that's, I met Mike there, and then his fiance, Pam, and then Jenna came and joined me. We got married, and then uh, uh, from October to July next, they got married, and we became friends, and uh, I had that support immediately of him, of them, and then of others in that uh, college uh, ministry setting. And of course, I mentioned the, all the cookies and cream that I wanted and all the people that supported me. That made so much difference to me. I had, all, I had felt called to ministry, and that's why I took that big step of faith, uh, but I did so with a lot of fear and trembling, and it took all those people surrounding me and encouraging me and helping me. It took me relying on God to give me the strength that I need to do away with the fear and the angst and to help me understand that God would be with me no matter what. That's what I learned and I'm here today because of the people and what God did in my life through that time. Even though I felt called, I still had a lot of anxiety and it took God's people to surround me and encourage me. And that's what I really wanna give a message to each of you graduating seniors is let the people of God surround you. Surround yourself. Be intentional about being in the places in which God's people can surround you no matter where you are. And always count on us, your community of faith here, uh, and know that we're praying for you and want to be an encouragement to you. It's a big transition in your life that you're entering now, just like Thomas had to learn and the disciples had to learn. Count on God, and God will give you all that you need. But listen, it's not just the seniors, is it? There's a lot of us that go through transitions in our life, and we need the community of faith, and we need the strength that God gives. This story that we read about on the evening of that first Easter and Thomas and the other disciples' experience shows us what we need to do. Be the body of Christ together. Pray for each other. Encourage each other. Support each other. Lift up each other. And certainly count on God to breathe his spirit into us to give us all we need to be who God wants us to be and to be able to overcome anything that we face. God is with us. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we are grateful for the great good news message that you have shown us once again in this story on that first Easter evening in which you came and appeared 
to the disciples and you breathed your Holy Spirit upon them and you gave them the commission to go out and teach and preach and forgive. And then the one week later experience that Thomas had, once again you came and you offered peace and you helped again one more of your disciples know that he could count on you. So today we ask for that same blessing that each of these graduates and each of us might rely on you, that we might open our hearts and minds to experience you breathing your Holy Spirit upon us once again to face whatever it is we might face, whatever a transition of life we may have. Help us to know we can rely on you and those that you have sent our way. Help us to surround ourselves with your people so that we might encourage and inspire one another. We pray in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Now that we have come to the time of communion, we are reminded that this table is open to all. In just a moment, you will be invited forward, and I want to remind you of ways in which we have communion available. If you're in the balcony, communion is available up there for you. And here on the floor to my left will be the allergen uh, free station, and the antique stations will be here in the middle, where you will be handed a piece of bread and invited to dip it into the cup. And to my right over here will be the station where you are handed a piece of bread and then a, cup, a small cup. All of this is so that you will feel welcome as we remember Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Dear Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we lower our heads before you and we confess to you the Father, God, that we are yours. Sometimes we carry on our lives as if there was no God, and we fall short of being better than we for these things we ask for your forgiveness, and we also ask for your strength. Give us clear minds and open hearts, so we may witness to you in the world. Remind us to be who you would have had us to be, regardless of what we are doing and who we are. Hold us to you and build our relationship with you and with those who you have given us on earth. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name, In the name of, of Jesus Christ, Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
pour out your Holy Spirit on these, on us who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may become for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as those who are assisting with communion make their way here, let me remind you this is not St. Peter's table. It is not a United Methodist table. It is our Lord's table. And it is our Lord who invites each and every one of us to come and receive the sacrament. So you do not have to be a member of this church or of the United Methodist Church. All are welcome, young and old alike. God invites to his table all of us that we might be reminded of this new covenant as we take the bread and the cup uh, that seals that new covenant between us and God. If you would like, after you receive the communion uh, elements, you can kneel here at the rail for prayer. And if you leave any offering here at the rail, we put this in our pastor's discretionary fund in which we try to help people uh, who might be in need and come our way. And uh, we try to use that resource in that way to help other people out here whether they're members of our church or out in the community, if they're in need and let us know, we try to help. So if you want to leave an offering, it will be used in that way. Won't you come as the ushers direct you now to receive the sacrament?
Today is Graduating Senior Sunday, and we recognize our graduating seniors for their time in school and in our student ministry. St. Peter's offers many different ways and events that seniors have been able to be part of throughout their time here. This includes various missions trips from UM Army, to bridge, to fellowship events like our beach retreat, midweek parties, and many different Bible studies. These seniors will always have a church home here at St. Peter's because of their community here and because of our generosity in our members. You can see the pictures up there of all of the ways that they have, uh, all the missions and activities they have done. There are many ways, we invite you on many different ways for them, I mean to give here, we online, in the plates, but give generously uh, to support our student ministry and the many other ministries here at St. Peter's as our ushers come forward. Thank you.
remain standing for our hymn of dedication, let me say what's about to happen. We're only going to sing one verse. Uh, and the reason is we have a new member, and we want to have time for that before we go. And I think um, we realized a moment ago that we didn't say on the announcements that today is uh, what we call now Explore STP for those wanting to decide about joining. So we have somebody joining, and that might inspire somebody else to want to go have some pizza and meet some of us uh, on staff. So right after we finish this service, we'll head down to E106, which is that direction, and you can come and join us if you want to learn more about the church. And I'm feeling like there's somebody wanting to say something behind me here too. So we're going to sing the first verse. And it's going to be hell the day that sees him rise. And then David's going to say something before we sing. I just want to remind everyone, next Sunday after the ice cream social at the Sea Wild event, uh, we'll have a concert by an internationally acclaimed pianist, which will be here to share a concert with us free of admission at 5 o'clock next Sunday. So we hope you all come out and support. As promised, our new member that is coming forward is Peggy Flores. So if she will make her way here now, I see her coming. And um, we have a Bible. We just handed out a lot of Bibles today. We believe in the Word of God. And uh, we love to give it to our new members and our graduating seniors, those third grade Bibles. If anybody else wants one, let me know. We'll figure it out. So uh, I'm going to give it to you ahead of time, anticipating you're going to give me the right answer to this question. So. Yeah, I do too. I know you. And the question is, will you be loyal to Christ and support St. Peter's United Methodist Church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? This is the right hand of fellowship that welcomes you here. And one good thing about starting at 1030 is we, we still have time for people to come greet you and talk with you and welcome you and encourage you and still beat the other churches to the <laughs> restaurant. So I hope you will come this way. Stay right here. I'm going to ask Elizabeth to come stand by her in a minute or now or in a minute or now. Uh, whatever you want to do, Elizabeth. Um, and then remember to get her picture because we love to have a picture of our new members as well. I'm so glad that you're here today, and I trust even though I was really preaching to the seniors that you got something out of it uh, today that might encourage you and inspire you. And as you go out into the week and into the world, that you live that good news message before others, that they see what you do and hear what you say and know that you have allowed God's Spirit to be breathed into your life, that you count on God's strength and encouragement and support for every step that you take, that you share the good news message with others about how much God does love us all and wants to be in a right relationship with us. That's what we mean when we say here at St. Peter's that our mission is to connect the world with God's love. As we always do when we end worship, we focus on the cross, the symbol that shows us how much God does love us, that he sent Jesus to die on that cross to give us life abundant and eternal. So let's be mindful of that as we focus on the cross and hear this benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen and amen. If you're comfortable holding the hand of the person beside you, why don't you do that now? And we'll sing together, We Are St. Peter's.